So hopefully you've watched the first video, Creating a Test, um, in Blackboard Part 1. And so this next video, Part 2, shows you how to deploy the test to provide a link for student access to the test that was created in that behind-the-scenes location. So let's, let's continue on. Now, um, because we started creating this test from that assessment, I don't know if you remember back then, we clicked the assessment button and chose test. Because we did it from there, when I click OK, it takes me back to that page. And now I can choose this test to be um, deployed to students. OK. I just click Submit. And that takes me to the test option page, which is all about how the student will take the test. All right. The difference between the, the reason I, you know, kind of made a big deal of, you know, returning to that page where I could select the test, if I had created the test right from this area from the control panel and test surveys and pools, when I finished creating the test and clicked OK, it would just leave me in that behind the scenes area. And I'd have to come to the to the assessments page and choose it from that list. So kind of a, a more deliberate second step. All right, so I'm on the test option page now. And I can see the description that I had given previously. So I have the option, do I want to show this description to students? And I'll say yes, or choose, you know, click the checkbox. As well, do I want to show the instructions, which is, you know, shown here as well. And I'll show both of those to students. I do not want to open the test in a new window. And generally, I would say, keep that as no. Um, again, just to eliminate any possible browser issues you could come up with, um, it's kind of best to keep things as simple as possible. So no to that. Make the link available. I'm going to say yes. But even though, so if I just said yes and didn't, you know, do it, didn't choose any options under these dates, it would. As soon as I finish setting up these options, that link for the test would be available to students. Okay, But if I just wanted this test to be available for a, a specified period of time, I still click Yes, but I check these boxes and choose specific dates. So say I wanted it to be available from next Monday at, I don't know, 8 a.m. until Wednesday at 8 a.m. Right. So Blackboard reads this as, yes, make it available, but not until February 17th and only until February 19th within that time period. Okay. If I click no, then it just wouldn't make it available at all. I'd have to come back in at some point and tell it yes, and, and if I had specified dates, specify those as well. All right, now um, multiple attempts, uh, obviously you can give the students several attempts to take the test, unlimited or a specific number just put in the number that you want to offer, or just give them the one attempt. This forced completion means once the students click on the link to take this test, if they get out of it for some reason before they're finished, they cannot go back into the test to finish it. Forced completion means once you've clicked it and clicked the Begin button, then you that's your only chance. Unless, you know, the, the instructor uh, clears your attempt for some reason if your browser crashed or something like that. All right, so that's forced completion. Um, a set timer, obviously, you can give the students, you know, a certain amount of time. This is a very simple test. I'm just going to give them a few minutes. Um, auto submit is linked with set timer. So even if auto submit is set to off, at the end of that 10 minutes, students, as I mentioned before, in the um, when students are taking the test, they, uh, at the end of the 10 minutes, an alert pops up and tells them that their time is up. Do they want to continue or submit the test? They have the option to continue, but even though the test is set up to be automatically graded, it will not list the grade, giving the instructor a chance to edit it because they went over time. If auto submit is set to on, then at the end of that 10 minutes, the test is just submitted, period, wherever, wherever the student is in the test. Um, and again, this is related to uh, making the link available. You can provide a password for this test if you want to, just to make it that much more secure, and that, then you'd have to give the students that password. Okay. Test availability exceptions means, say, for example, you had a student with um, had documented special needs, 
you can just add that student here, for example. This will show a list of the students in your class. So say this student, um, I'm still going to just have a single attempt, but instead of 10 minutes, I'm going to give her 20 minutes. Okay, and at the end of that 20 minutes, because this is not set to on, I will not auto-submit that as well. So at the end of the 20 minutes, they'll be alerted that their time is up. Do they want to continue or not? Availability means, again, it's giving me if, if this student could not take it on that within that time period, I could specify different dates and time here. Okay. And um, force completion is the same thing. Um, since I did not choose it here, I won't choose it for that student. Okay, so that can be very helpful um, for students who were, you know, had an emergency and couldn't take the test at a specified time, or with students with, you know, special needs. Um, you can set the, their their opportunity up specifically for them. Due date will create um, an alert in the course um, calendar. Um, but also will mark if the student, if the you know test link was available beyond the due date for some reason. Um, either you can not allow students to take the test if the due date is passed, or the test will be flagged um, that it was taken you know beyond the due date, even if you did not choose this. Okay. Self-assessment options, of course, you want the the score to be calculated in the grade center totals. Um, if you had a reason not to, then you can do that here as well. Okay, and remember on that the video where the student took the test, after they submitted their test, they got to see their score. They saw all of the available answers, the correct answer, and what they actually submitted. Um, any, if there's any feedback um, available, they can see that at that time. If you wanted to give them an, another option, so say for example you only wanted them to see the score after they finished the test, and then at another time you were going to review the test with the students, you could set it up this way and then choose on a specific date to open up the other um, feedback options for students, choosing the date and time. Okay. Again, I recommend that you have the test be presented all at once. Um, showing them one at a time, um, again, can really eat up computer resources and uh, it can be a recipe for crashing. Um, not knowing what your students have if they're taking the test at home, um, that can be problematic. All right. So those are all of the test options. So then when you're finished, you can just click Submit. And so here's the link to that test. Okay, and remember, notice how this one is just kind of grayed out where this one is much more colorful. That means that this test is available for students right now and this one is not because remember we made it available after February 17th at 8 a.m. And let me also say that if you're creating a survey, it's the exact same process, only under assessments instead of choosing the test tool, you'll choose the survey tool. All right, and then when you're creating questions, of course, the questions won't have a scoring option, right? Okay, so whether you you're start creating your test or survey from the content area, or if we go to the course tools, test surveys and pools, if you're creating a test, you click test. If you're creating a survey, you click survey, but the rest of the process is the same. All right, if you have any questions, just contact the TLC. Thank you.